Hi everyone. Next video. Uh, loss of kinetic energy. This one's quite quick, really. <laughs> You're thinking, thank God. Excellent, quick. Uh, so, just that this little extension to collisions um, about the idea of the loss of kinetic energy. So, once the collisions happened, you know, once that impact has occurred, energy will be lost, won't it? Sound, heat, friction, um, and that do, and the amount also would depend on E, that value of E of how much kinetic energy is being lost. Because as we know, if E is one, we have a perfectly elastic situation where no kinetic energy is lost. Uh, hard to think about when that could ever happen in practice, of course. Uh, and when E is zero, we have a perfectly inelastic situation where all kinetic energy is lost. <clears throat> and again, in reality, hard to imagine that happening. But still, we've got two particles A and B of 300 grams uh, and 200 grams. So normal setup. So let's go for this. So we've got 0.3 kilograms. We always work in kilograms. Um, 0.2, right? Uh, connected by a light inextensible string. So we know what light means. It means zero mass. Inextensible means it doesn't stretch. And that means that the acceleration is uniform across the whole string. The particles are side by side on a smooth floor and A is projected with speed six meters per second directly away from B. So think about what happens. Um, and it says find the loss of kinetic energy due to the jerk. Okay. So think about what happens here. Until A moves and all the slacks taking up on the string, so UA is projected as six, yeah? What's UB speed? Remember what we're talking about when we're talking about jerk and impacts. It's an impulse. It's literally the, the microsecond before the impact and the microsecond just after. So just before that string has pulled completely tight and jerk has occurred, B isn't moving, is it? It's at zero meters per second. I know a lot of people find that the hard bit, okay? So what is jerk? Jerk is impulse on string. So uh, hopefully you've heard of that before, but if you haven't, that's what that means. Jerk is impulse on string. So how, how you draw jerks, just as I've put it here, just like you with tension, it's going inwards, isn't it? The impulse, the snap point, is also going inwards and is denoted by this J here, right? We also need, so rather than having impulses out here, for a string, the impulse occurs on the string itself and goes inwards because the string is trying to keep itself together. Now, what's happening to VA Well, and VB? Because we need to know that as well in order to answer this question. Well, Think about it, A is going to the left, B then starts coming along with it. A is not going to suddenly reverse direction, is it? And B is going to follow A wherever it goes because the string is now tight. And as it follows it wherever it goes and the string is now tight, what must the speed of them both be? Well, we don't know, but they must be the same because they're both moving together with a tight string the entire way because it's inextensible, remember. Okay, so that's the important thing. V and V, they must be going at the same speed. So we need to know the loss of kinetic energy due to the jerk, right? So first off, how do you find the loss of kinetic energy? Well, hopefully you know that kinetic energy, the formula is half mv squared. If anyone does physics, I'm sure you know that, or maybe you learn it from GCC, I don't know. But yes, ek is half mv squared. That's your formula, but the overall formula, though, so total loss of EK, the formula for that, if there's a loss, that must mean there was more at the start than there was at the end. So loss is always going to be positive, isn't it? Because it's a difference. It's an absolute value. So it's going to be total start EK, isn't it? Subtract total end EK. But just... Remember what this EK in total means. This means of the system. So of the system, okay? And you need to take each particle separately within that total system. So 
if I'm going to use this half mv squared thing, I need to know all the speeds, don't I? I know all the u's, I know all the starting velocities, that's good, but I don't know the finals. So I'm going to go back to my faithful comp, and I'm going to go to the left, because most of the arrows are going to the left. So UA should be quite used to this now. Mass velocity plus mass velocity was zero. And then for the V parts, we've got mass velocity and mass velocity, which we assume is V. So therefore V must be six times that. So 1.8 divided by 0.5. And that is 3.6 meters per second. And it makes sense it slowed down a bit from when it started at 6. Because A is carrying B with it, right? So now we can find the loss of EK. So loss EK equals, so remember what we said, total start. But each particle separately. So total start. Half. So I'm going to do particle A first. Half. Mass of A is 0.3. Velocity is 6, all squared, plus half. Now I do B, 0 0.2. Velocity is 0, squared, you see? I take each particle separate and add their kinetic energies together. I do not put the masses together and then do it, right? Take them separately, finish, or end. So half, mass, let's do A first, 0.3. And V was 3.6 squared plus half, lots of 0.2. So it doesn't matter what directions they're in and things like that. That doesn't matter because even if they're going in opposite directions, they still have kinetic energy. It's just moving in a different direction. So 3.6 squared. So then we can add them together. <coughs> so 0.5 times 0.3 times 6 squared plus 0.5 times 0.2 times 0, oh, should just done zero. Oh. okay, 0.5 times 0.3 times 3.6 squared, plus 0.5 times 0.2 times 3.6 squared, cool, so I should get 2.16, and what's the measure for energy, it's joules, okay, joules, need to know that as well, okay, <laughs> Next question then. Right. This is a good one. This is a really good question. Uh, where we're going to bring in everything together. Right. So particle P of mass 2m. So we're used to this setup now. There's P. There's Q. Putting everything together into a big exam question. So 2m. And it's moving with speed 3u. So 3u. Uh, and 3m for q, and uh, it's moving the opposite direction with u. So you're pretty familiar with this now. Feel free to skip ahead. You actually do the question and then see if we agree. Uh, and you can check back the video for the method. So direction of motion of p is reversed. Okay, that's interesting. So it's telling us that this is reversed. So I am going to put vp to the left, right? Uh, it doesn't say anything about Q, so I'm going to assume Q is going to the right. It literally doesn't matter. It's the diagram which does everything for me. So part A, show the speed of Q is that. Fine, let's do that. So normal stuff, Newton's law of restitution, coefficient of restitution. So we're going to the right, E equals right. What's the first thing? going to the right. The fastest thing going to the right is VQ minus, well I know what I'm saying, VP is to the left, so that's minus VP. It literally doesn't matter if you put VP the other way, but it's already told you it's reversed, so you know your answer is going to be negative, okay? Anyway, fastest going to the right is 3U, and the other one is going in the opposite direction. So we get 4UE, is VQ plus VP, that's cool, so therefore VP, because I'm trying to find VQ, I'm going to make VP the subject, optimize your work, okay, then we've got comp, faithful comp, go to the right, 
So 3um minus 3mu, oh, so it's 3 times 2, isn't it, at the start? So that's 6 um uh, and VP is going the opposite way, so that's 2m VP, but to the left, and it's minus, so plus 3m VQ at the end. M's cancel, and we get 3u is the same as minus 2vp. So I'm literally going to shove that straight in. So minus 8ue. And um, we've got, so that's that bit. And now minus 2 times that is plus 2vq plus 3vq. So I should get vq is 3u plus 8ue over 5. And I can take out the u over 5, so I get 3 plus 8e, which is what it wanted. Fantastic. Yay. Smiley face. Okay. Part B. Find the range of possible values of e. Right. We need to be careful here. So the range of possible values of e. We know that vp is going to the left and I assumed it was going to the left which means my answer is positive because I assumed it was going to the left which is correct because it has reversed so if I work out what VP is first VP is 4UE subtract VQ and VQ is 3U over 5 plus 8U e over 5 but I'm taking it away so take 8 ue over 5 so what's that over 5 that's 20 so vp is uh, 12 ue over 5 Ugh, what's going on with my writing today 12 ue over 5 take away 3 u over 5 fantastic take out the u over 5 12 e take 3 perfect Okay, <laughs> find the range of values of this then. So VP must be positive because I assumed it was going left. So that means this thing is bigger than zero. U over 5 cancels, 12E minus 3 is bigger than zero. So E must be greater than a quarter, but we know that it can't be bigger than one. So be careful of that. Now it is worth noting that I've only checked VP. Now, in very tricky exam questions, they're going to check VQ as well because the inequality needs to fit for both. So I could do a quick check for VQ, but think about it. VQ is U over 5, 3 plus AE. Is that ever going to cause a problem? No. Um, no, because E can't be negative. So E can be any value, and VQ will still go towards the right. So I assumed it was going right, and this will always be positive. So it is definitely going right. So it's going to have no effect on my inequality, because basically E can be any number between 0 and 1, and this will be fine. So the only inequality that must be satisfied then is this quarter one here. OK, cool. Now we can move on. <clears throat> it's saying find the total kinetic energy of the particles. Um, the total kinetic, <coughs> sorry, find this value k because it says the total kinetic energy of the particles before the collision is t. Okay, the total kinetic energy of the particles after the collision is kt. Given that e equals a half, find the value of k. So the total kinetic energy is t. So that's our uh, start, <clears throat> the total kinetic energy of the particles after it is kT, okay. So we know loss in kinetic energy, remember it's total start, take away total finish, but it's in a slightly different question than that because it's actually just giving me what the start is and the finish is, it's not asking what is the actual loss. So first I need to work out what T is, and I need to know what KT is, and I want a K by itself, so immediately I can see that I need to divide this by this to get K, because the T's will cancel and I'll be left with K. So let's try that. So 
before the collision is T, so that's the start, and we know that EK is half MV squared, So, and we know that E is a half, so we need our speeds, don't we? Okay, so I'm going to go back to the question. So looking at my diagram, our starts, P was 3U and Q was U, and it doesn't matter if they're in different directions, so start is half M, uh, so that's 2M, 3U squared plus half, uh, what is our 3M, and our speed was U squared. Fantastic, cool. So at the moment I've got half times that, so that's 9U squared times M, and I've got my plus that, so plus 3 over 2, uh, MU squared, so that's 2, that's 18, so that's 21 over 2, okay. Mm -hmm. 21 over 2, u squared m, nice. KT, again, I might make mistakes, so just if you disagree with something, you know, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> just like, uh, just change it. So, <clears throat> this time we need VP, and I know from the previous question that VP was uh, u over 5, 12e, 12e, take 3. So VP, uh, u over 3, 12e, take 3. Let's check that. That's no, u over 5, isn't it? Okay, u over 5. And it tells us that e is a quarter, uh, sorry, e is a half here. So that means VP is u over 5. 12 times that is 6. Take 3 is 3. So that's 3u over 5. So 3u over 5 squared plus, and now we've got our half 3m, and now we've got our vq, and I know that vq is u over 5, 8e plus that, so that's 7u over 5 all squared. <clears throat> cool. And that leaves us with, let's work this out. So always easier to just do it in a calculator. So 0.5 times 2 times 3 over 5 squared plus 0.5 times 3 times 7 over 5 squared. So 33 over 10 mu squared. Great. I want k. So it seems to me kt over t, which is the same as 33 over 10 mu squared over... Uh, da, 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 over 21 over 12 u squared m implies the t's will cancel, the m's and the u squares will cancel, so I get 33 over 10 divided by 21 by 12, so that's 66 over 35. Ah, I can see what I've done wrong here, I put 12 and not 2. Okay, cool. So it's not 66 over 35. Uh, the answer is 11 over 35. Sweet. Okay, cool. So two examples there of kinetic energy, that loss in kinetic energy. Remember, that's total start, take away, total finish. You do the particles separately. You do not do a joint system uh, because they're moving in different directions. So you need to account for both of the individual kinetic energies and then adding them together. Okay, that nice little trick at the end with kt over t. Be careful of that. It wasn't asking for the loss. It was asking us to compare the start and the finish kinetic energies. Okay, that's it. For